Hi everybody, this is Anne. The term origami was traditionally referred to as the Japanese art of paper folding. Over the years, the terms become much wider to include the transformation of most any flat surface material into a three-dimensional object, including my favorite medium, clay. I was inspired by the art form of origami to design five pottery containers using geometric shapes as the inspiration for the templates. In this video, I'll walk you through the steps to construct them. I'll be using a different clay than usual to demonstrate with. It was very stiff, so I softened it up a bit. Of course, Jim thought it'd be fun to videotape my technique. Once softened, I rolled it into a quarter inch slab and ribbed both sides. The first project was inspired by the hexagon shape. I started with it in the center, then worked the template around it. I cut the template out with a needle tool. The clay is quite stiff, so next time I think I'll try an X-Acto knife. I scored the edges between each V-notch by simply scratching the clay upward and at an angle. I slipped the connecting areas. A tip is to only slip one side of each of the connections. For the construction, it's best to let the clay dry and stiffen up a bit before connecting, but I didn't have time for that, so I'll need to be very careful connecting the joints. You can see that the soft clay has more trouble holding its shape. I just had to be very gentle and not squeeze the clay too tightly. I continued connecting the sides until they were all folded up. I rolled thin coils and worked them along the inside between each joint and between the top petal shapes. I ribbed the outside of the joints and in between each petal to help seal them. I ran wet fingers along the top of the petal shapes to round and soften them. Now here's one that I made earlier where I refined the joints as the clay stiffened. When it was bone dry, I underglaze painted the peonies around the bottom. Here it is all glazed and fired to cone five with a five minute hold. I can see putting a cupcake in this container, wrapping it up, and giving it as a sweet gift. The next project was inspired by the octagon. This time, I designed the edges to fold more to the sides. This time, I used the X-Acto knife to make the cuts. I had much cleaner lines. I scored all the edges like I did for the first project. Note that I only scored the taller edges to the height of the smaller connecting side. I slipped one edge of each joint. I began to connect the edges. Again, I'd recommend letting the clay stiffen up a bit before connecting the joints, but the edges are so short that the ability for it to hold its shape is less critical. I rolled coils and worked them into the joints and along the top edge.
With wet fingers, I pinched the top edge along the entire bowl to soften it. Here's one I made earlier where I refined the edges as it dried. Then I underglazed the interior to echo that octagonal shape. I used Amico Clear Glaze on the inside and Spectrum Chamois and Amico Sky on the outside, then fired it to cone 5 with a 5 minute hold. Okay, Jim had too much fun filming my feet. This next project was inspired by the circle. I divided it into three sides and curled them around. I cut the template out of a quarter inch slab using my X-Acto knife. I scored each connecting edge like the other projects and slipped one side of each joint. This bowl had much larger sides than the octagon, so it really works best to let the clay stiffen to leather hard before connecting. I work the joints along the inside and the outside to make sure they're tightly sealed. Again, I worked my wet fingers along the top edge to soften it. Here's one that I made earlier. I drew and carved this design to echo the curved joint lines, and in the center, I still worked a circle into it, giving it a B for the focal point. On the back side, I attached three little feet along the joints, then painted some fun vines radiating from the center. To glaze, I used Amico Clear and Spectrum Chamois for the green glaze. That would look so nice in the center of a table with fruit in it. This next project was inspired by the heart shape. To simplify the shape, I cut it in half and designed the template around that first side. Again, I cut the template from the clay slab. I scored and slipped the edges like the other projects. I pushed a ruler along the bottom of the flat edge side of the template so it would have a sharper fold. The top rounded flaps fold better when the clay is softer, as they don't need a well-defined corner. I went ahead and connected them. I connected the flatter sides at the point, then connected the straight side to the upper curve. I turned the bowl over and worked the edges nice and tight. I worked the coils into each joint, then made sure the sides were even and the flat edge was straight. To make the other side of the heart, simply turn the template over to make its mirrored counterpart. Here's a pair of them that I made earlier. You can see that I made sure those side edges were flat so they could fit together once constructed. I underglaze different yet matching patterns on each side and glaze them with Amico Clear Glaze fired to cone 5 with a 5 minute hold. These would be great Valentine Day gifts filled with candy, I think. The fifth project was inspired by the clover shape. I cut out the clover shape for the bottom and I'll cut three of the rectangles. I scored the rim around the entire clover. I then scored the bottom of each of the rectangles. I slipped the clover. I then took the first rectangle and curved it around the clover petal. I continued this with the other two rectangles, butting the edges together and following the shape of the clover bottom.
When it was in place, I scored and slipped all the edges, worked the bottom tight to the walls, then worked rolled coils in between all the joints. I made sure to soften the top edge with my wet fingers. To make sure the edges were nice and straight, I used a carpet tube along the inside of each wall. As there's so many joints and curves on this project, I knew the joints would want to crack as they dried, so I attached little balls of clay at the top of each joint. This works as a decoration and an added layer of protection from cracking. Here's one that I made earlier. The trick to preventing cracking is to let it dry slowly under plastic. I liked the idea of the clover, so I decided to paint an Irish theme on it. I glazed it with my white liner glaze and the Spectrum chamois along the rim and the foot. I fired it to cone 5 with a 5 minute hold. I can see this is a nice planter for succulents or again a nice candy box. If you'd like to try these projects, I've posted the templates for free. Look for the link in the description section under this video where you can screenshot them and print them out. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.